However, a tour of Doma organized for media by the government showed security forces standing on street corners near leftover rebel graffiti, and Russian military police patrolling the streets. People were jostling in a long queue to receive the bread, rice, and pasta being handed out from state aid trucks at a major roundabout. Look at this humiliating scene, said Amin Darkush, the region's deputy police chief, watching dozens of people chasing a truck distributing bread. People here only ate bread made of barley. Food stores The United Nations said there were severe shortages of food in eastern Gouda throughout the government's siege, though the main rebel group there said it had enough in its stores to last another year. All around Darkush were signs of the weeks of bombardment, some of the fiercest of the war, that brought the siege to an end. Most of Doma's remaining residents live in damaged buildings, on streets covered in rubble and the remains of home furnishings. On Omar bin al-Khattab Street, a group of injured young men stood around, leaning on crutches. All that remains of the rebels is the slogans painted on walls and shop fronts, Eastern Gouda, Land of Heroes and Foundry of Men, Doma is the graveyard of the Shabiha, pro-Assad militias, outside the remains of a pharmacy, a group of veiled women were hoping to find medicine. My son was injured when a bomb hit our house, one said. There is no medicine or bandages to treat him with. His leg might be amputated. Underground hospital The OPCW inspectors arrived in Damascus on Friday, and were still waiting to visit Doma. The hospital where the victims of the alleged attack were treated is underground, concealed beneath the shell of a large concrete agriculture ministry building whose exterior bears the scars of years of warfare, scorch marks and holes blasted in walls and roofs. Huge vaulted tunnels, lined with metal, are big enough to allow ambulances to drive down to basements and chambers dug under the town. The hospital, which has an operating theater and an intensive care ward, is still being used. Medical aid groups and the White Helmets Rescue Organization have said such statements, already aired on state television in recent days, were made under duress. Relief organizations say dozens of men, women, and children were killed, and footage of young victims foaming at the mouth and weeping in agony has been used to help justify the Western intervention.